All right, guys, tonight I got a very special video for you. I wasn't going to do this, but after speaking with some senior audiophiles about the old co long lost coat hanger uh, wires that uh, nobody seems to do anymore, either they're not doing it right or they just don't believe in it. And we all know audio is more believing than anything. Uh, after going over some things with them and getting some kind of some specs and some parameters, I've got my own here, and I'm going to go over what I've done, and then we're going to hook them up and listen to them. So, what I've started with is they recommended I get the older the steel coat hanger, the better. The older coat hangers, which I've I was able to get these from my grandparents' house. Um, they could easily be from all the way back to possibly even the 40s, but the older ones had a better copper steel alloy, which is what helps a lot in this whole idea here. Um, newer steel hangers are just cheap Chinese pot steel. You, you want to get the older ones. Uh, the copper steel alloy made them durable and yet flexible. But it also so happens to work very well for conducting audio signals. So, what I have done is I got my hands on some, as far as I know, some very old hangers. And when you, uh, you're going to want to untwist them and get them, as you can see here, as straight as possible. I'll show you this one here. I mean, you can you could work at them for a while and get them, you know, super straight. And then I got some good quality um, gold, nice gold plated banana plugs. Um, you could use copper if you can find some of the nice copper banana plugs. Um, there are some around or uh, rhodium plated or silver plated even. Um, but you're going to want a banana plug that has at least two crimps. Um, something that's really going to be able to bite into that copper steel alloy and get a good contact with it. And you want... When you straighten the coat hanger out, you want to get it, like I said, as straight as possible, and then maintain these coils on each end, and because this, as we, every audio audio experienced senior audio audiophile will tell you, the straighter your cables, the less interference and. Um, just less things interfering with the path of the audio signal. So you want to get it out and straight into the speakers uh, as cleanly as possible. The only time you want to modify or affect the straightness of the cable or any bends or coils in the cable is when you're purposely trying to modify the signal with capacitance, inductance, or uh, you know skin effect, and then even uh, you know uh, oh, what's the other one. Uh, attenuation I guess and other than getting it straight when you uncoil the neck of the hanger you're going to want to maintain this coil here and on the other end here that goes right in to the this end the banana plug on this end these are known as Murphy coils they uh, do have an effect depending on which way you hook them up by leaving these coils in it causes a certain amount of inductance and, and attenuation to the signal. So if you have this end hooked to the amplifier, you should get a cleaner, more accurate sound to where if you have this end hooked directly to the amplifier and the Murphy coil directly at the beginning of the amplifier, you should get a warmer, richer sound, a more even, smoother, richer sound. So, and as any other, uh, any audiophile will tell you, in some cables, electricity or audio signals do conduct or flow better one way through a cable than another. Now, I mean, there's not a ton to go over here because it's a pretty straightforward process. And a lot of it is uh, sometimes overthought. But it is quite simple. It all makes sense. And then even on this guy here, you'll see there's a piece of blue felt towards the middle here. And I use this guy on the left side because my left ear is a little more sensitive than, it's about 0 
decibel is more sensitive than my right ear. So about in the middle of this hanger or this wire, once I start pushing about 20 or 30 watts, I get enough skin effect built up right in the middle of this wire that I get this uh, sensation in my left ear. So by placing a bit of felt on the surface of this, it has been able to retard or mute that uh, skin effect just enough um, that it makes it more comfortable for my left ear. So I think the next thing is we'll get these hooked up. Well, actually, you know what? I have a set. My current wires I've been using, um, we'll just go over and look at those and then... Uh, We'll get everything else switched over. So, what I'm using right now, over here. We'll just set the camera down right here. Let me pull one of these out. These are my own homemade wires. These are Quad 14 uh, USA made CCI pure copper wires. So each uh, positive and negative each has it has dual uh, dual 14 or you know so it's effectively overall quad 14 and then each each uh, pair is twisted so and these have worked pretty good so far but um, we'll see if uh, something like this and then I have a really nice um, gold plated uh, uh, BFA type banana plug connectors on the end that provide a good tight fit but um, this kind of wire and setup is pretty conventional. We're going to listen to a couple seconds of music with these, and then we'll switch over and see if we can hear the difference with the, um, the audio file hangers. Okay, this will be the first uh, audio test with the Quad 14 pure copper wires. Now, this will be... The source of uh, initially will be my music PC, which is optical into my Emotiva preamp, which is feeding the. I have the Marantz SR4021 uh, stereo receiver, but I have pulled out the preamp jumpers and it is now being used as just a power amp. Um, and the Marantz. Uh, has a very reliable, clean sound, so it should be good enough to uh, take advantage of this test. And then I'm using my own uh, DIY speakers, which I've gotten planned from a, a very experienced Japanese builder known as Tai Knots. So I followed his plans closely, built the crossovers, cabinets, everything you know, to spec that was listed and have been very happy with them so far. So it's not the best system, but it should be enough to hear a difference. Okay, guys, that was sample one that was with, you know, just typical run-of-the-mill quad 14 pure copper wires. So uh, we'll get this stopped and switched over. We'll get the uh, legendary hangers put in there and get set up again and see, see what we get. Okay, a few other things I forgot to mention. Due to the already proven performance of this, 
you are limited to the length of a single hanger. You can't twist multiple hangers together to get longer runs. So unfortunately, I had to pull my speakers in a little bit uh, just so they'd reach. As I think these only come out to about a three foot run, three, three and a half foot run. So they're not super long. And then uh, since mine are still just bare metal, hooking them up for this demonstration for you guys, I had to make sure the wires, you know, aren't touching because we don't want anything shorting out. Down the road, once I clean them up, sand them down, get the old varnish off uh, the steel, um, I'll uh, probably plasti dip or rubberize them so to insulate them from each other. And uh, the other thing is you always, I mean, you can't keep them perfectly straight. You can kind of see they've curved a little bit, but that's okay. Um, we want to, we don't want to get any bends that are too tight in there. Um, long, straight flowing movements if we can. And then the other thing would be, uh, as you can see, I have them spaced apart. You want to keep them spaced apart. That helps pre prevent inductance. And then uh, on the left side, as I have over there, um, I have the one with the felt for, to help reduce skin effect. And that's going to be when you put your banana plugs on, you want to put that, well, at least for me, you want to put it on the positive wire because the skin effect always uh, kind of manifests in the positive wire more so than the negative wire. So it's just... Just a quick FYI. So we got it all set up. We're going to listen to the same song again. We'll go through it and have some final thoughts. All right. Almost immediately, the low end is warmer. The tambourine. I can hear more separation in the tambourine. Now I do have these set up with the Murphy coil closer to the speaker as I wanted a more accurate representation than a warmer, smoother representation. So Yeah, I can the tweeters I can already tell they're resolving much better. Yeah, they just sound smoother and more effortless. Better, more resolving. Bass seems a little bit tighter, but yet warmer. But I can hear that. I can hear the, the accuracy is coming through in the tweeters for sure. Um, having the Murphy coil set up that way. I could flip them around and see, but this is, a, this is more my sound signature that I like. Um, yeah, now it's just a process to getting these things set up so I can use them comfortably without them worrying about them shorting out. Uh, possibly even uh, doing some testing on them, kind of see what I'm getting as far as on the scientific end, and then maybe re releasing uh, some DIY plans for them. I think we've heard enough and I hope you guys know that I'm just effing joking this is this a video I'm making to give everybody maybe some laughs over the holiday season when you're possibly stuck at your relatives for Christmas bored watching YouTube uh, or sitting on the couch with, after you ate too much watching YouTube uh, 
Yeah, the whole reason I'm doing this video too is because there's always there's a lot of. Um, that I, don't, I guess I can't say a lot, but there's a handful of articles out there that have come up time to time where they've done these. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna turn this off before I fry my rants. And when I say fry, not that the using a coat hanger is gonna hurt the amplifier in any way. Really, it's just I don't. When I'm sitting here talking, I don't want one of the wires to slip and touch and short out. But anyway, it's I'm doing this kind of just for laughs and uh, like I was saying, there's there's a bunch of videos done on this and or not videos, man, I'm tired. Uh, articles that have come up time to time about this where they've done this and a lot of times you hear where in the blind studies they do the old coat hanger trick and they'll fool a bunch of old audio files and um, I've read it more than once, I, I believe it and because uh, hearing is so um, influential in many ways, visually, you know, just other people talking to you, the placebo effect of things, uh, hearing is very tricky because it's it's a complicated matter between sound waves, your ears and your brain and all these other things that are going on and uh, I just thought this would be fun. Now the reason it works is because even though this is some crappy old steel wire, that, as far as I know there's no such thing as a, a copper steel alloy um, is just the gauge of the steel wire and its, I don't know, conductivity, its resistance, and you know, and everything is good enough that it has no problem, you know, transferring, you know, uh, an audio signal. I don't know if it's the best. I haven't tested it. I doubt it. I'm sure copper wire uh, works much better. But the other point of this is whether the, the wire is made out of copper or steel or aluminum like CCA or whatever um, long as certain you know electrical conditions as far as inductance and resistance and capacitance and attenuation long as certain parameters are met um, is the material really does the material really matter that much so like you know arguably a 12 gauge CCA wire is going to be able to far in the audio take place of like a 16 gauge copper wire or you know a, yeah 12 gauge CCA versus like a 16 gauge copper you start measuring resistances and other things and at the same time another thing I just find it so funny how serious some guys get over their wires and meanwhile almost any of them could be tricked in a blind test but you know long as they see those pretty you know skinned or you know braided sleeved whatever you know read the amazing brochure that you know all these things that have created this positive profile in their mind um, they you know these wires sound better I just, I can hear it yep absolutely you know maybe they can I mean that's the other thing about hearing is it's hard to tell anybody what they can and can't hear um, other than measuring things and then uh, where it comes out is in the blind studies and stuff so I just thought it'd be fun to actually hook up some coat hangers and play music through them and honestly I mean, I'm not, I'm not using a good source. I'm just playing copyright free music off YouTube just to have to possibly prevent myself from going back and editing this video. Uh, but, uh, I mean, I don't know what YouTube's HD audio quality is. It's probably not some, you know, it's probably, um, better than it, basic MP3, you know, but it's, you know, not flack either, but I think it's good enough. And, uh, in this instance, between my quad 14s and the coat hangers just right off the bat just sitting here listening I don't really hear any difference at all as far as I can tell I mean if I sat here and you know in the dark and listen to you know and you know possibly increase my hearing senses and listen to a handful of albums that I'm super familiar with and really studied the sound I'm I'm probably could tell a difference but just sitting here listening to music couldn't really tell any difference. I mean, and these speakers, I've had these speakers for 
uh, <laughs> these speakers I built. Um, they're not someone else's plans or anything. I built these. I've, I think I built them in 2011. And between Basebox Pro and X Over Pro from Harris Tech, um, they're not perfectly measured or anything. I I did use TS parameters and everything, and I like the way they sound. I've been very comfortable with them and very familiar with them for many years. So uh, when I hook different amplifiers and different things to them, um, I tend to be able to notice a bit of a difference just because I'm so familiar with these speakers' sound signature. And wire is usually not one thing that I notice much of a difference in. And I got... I might elaborate on this video if you guys want, but over there in the corner, I got all kinds of wires I've made hanging up that I've used on these. Um, and it's usually different different amplifiers, um, maybe even different DACs, different audio sources, but different wires. Now, if I were to use some like little dinky 20 gauge or possibly even eight, anything less than 18 gauge, um, uh, yeah, you can kind of start to tell the audio, the low end gets weaker. But anyway, I don't want to ramble on too long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was all just for laughs. Don't be putting stupid comments down there saying I'm an idiot and why, you know, I don't want to, you know, it was all just a joke for fun. So um, like and subscribe. Maybe I'll do more videos like this in the future um, just because I find some of the uh, real snooty audiophilia just hilarious sometimes. So. All right, good night, guys. Happy holidays.